Hi! Welcome to episode one of the Sweet Sparrow Knits podcast. My name is Julie. You can find me on Instagram as Julie Rose Sews. I'm also on Ravelry as Julie Rose Sews. Um, and I'm on Periscope as Julie Rose Sews. You can find my Etsy shop at sweetsparrowknits.etsy.com, and that is where I sell my hand-dyed yarn. This is my first episode, obviously. <laughs> um, I want to start a podcast because I really enjoy watching other people's podcasts. I think it's something that um, connects knitters in a way that we don't necessarily all have the opportunity to experience on a regular basis, like if there's not a knitting group near you, um, or if it doesn't work with your schedule. And I've made a lot of really fantastic friends through knitting podcasts, so I wanted to give it a try. Um, I am pretty nervous, <laughs> so who knows? Maybe no one will ever see this attempt. But obviously, if you're seeing it, I didn't chicken out. <laughs> um, so I guess I'll start with a little bit of introduction about myself. I work as a fashion designer. I live just outside New York City. I live in New Jersey. Um, I can see Lower Manhattan out my living room window. We're currently in my living room, by the way. Um, it's a really fantastic job. I get to actually design a lot of sweaters, which of course as a knitter I love. Um, but yeah, knitting by hand has always been my sort of creative hobby, um, which leads me into how I learned how to knit. I learned how to knit from my grandmother. Um, I used to go to her house after school when I was in high school, and <laughs> we would watch uh, Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy together, and she would knit. And one day I kind of thought, oh, I want to do that. You know, I'm doing two out of these three things. I'm, I'm drinking tea, I'm watching Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy. I may as well, you know, go all the way on this and take up the knitting. Um, my first project was a scarf, as I think a lot of people's first project is. It was a single ply cream wool scarf. Um, <laughs> it started about this wide and one side just gradually increased and then decreased back down once I realized what was going on. Once my grandmother realized what was going on, I didn't know what was going on. Um, and I actually ended up like folding over and sewing that part of it because it was so absurdly wide and I put a bunch of like lace and ribbon on it after the fact. Ah, questionable. Very questionable. But that, <laughs> that was my first project. Um, and then I became a capital K knitter, so to speak. After I graduated college, um, I was looking for a job. And since you can only apply for jobs so many hours out of the day, I needed something else to do with the rest of my time. Uh, so there's a knitting group in my hometown and I started going to that knitting group and they were absolutely fantastic and I just, dove right in, got a spinning wheel a few months after my college graduation, and I haven't looked back since. <laughs> okay, let's move on to my current works in progress. All right. So I am currently working on the Calligraphy Cardigan by Hannah Fettig. Ooh. It's going to be interesting getting the hang of showing my, my stuff backward. Okay, so this is the collar portion of the cardigan. And then I'm just moving into the raglan shaping here. And I'm knitting this out of Knit Picks City Tweed DK. I'm all wound up here. <laughs> In the plush colorway. Is this really gorgeous lavender with flecks of tweed and brown and black and tan. It's really beautiful and it's really soft and nice to work with. And I think it will be lovely to wear. My other work in progress. This is self-patterning yarn. It is Lana Grossa Mylinvite? Mylinvite? It is this, and it is in colorway 
3808. Descriptive. Um, I picked this up at Nitty City when I was on the New York City yarn crawl uh, with some of my knitting friends from work. So as you may have seen if you watched my Periscope um, last week, I am working on the second sock of this pair and the first sock, <laughs> I wasn't paying attention because this has been my train knitting. Um, I have about an hour and a half commute. Uh, it's a mix of walking and trains, but it's about 40 minutes of good solid knitting time uh, each way, twice a day. So I was knitting on this sock toe up and I kind of didn't realize how long it was getting. It, it got really long. So I am currently working on the second ridiculously long sock and I'm actually getting there. I have maybe two and a half inches to go before I switch to my contrast color and start my ribbing. And the contrast color on these is just Patton's Croy in the flax colorway. I spent most of yesterday, uh, well yesterday morning and early afternoon knitting on these in a lovely coffee shop in the city. Um, I was meeting up with my boyfriend and um, I was in the city a little bit earlier than he was so I enjoyed a lovely chai latte and a black and white cookie and knitting and I was listening to Game of Thrones uh, the second book A Clash of Kings um, which was kind of a funny contrast actually to be just you know sitting in this little coffee shop quietly knitting and sipping my latte and have this wildly violent um, intense book happening in my ears uh, I really enjoyed it. There's few things that I enjoy more than just enjoying time in a coffee shop. Um, I, was, I went to The Bean on 12th Street in New York City. It's a cute coffee shop. Um, the crowd is a lot of like NYU students. So it was, you know, it was, it was busy, but it wasn't, um, it didn't feel hectic or rushed at all and everything that I had there was absolutely delicious. So, highly recommend. Let's talk finished objects. I actually only have one to show you this week. I have a pair of socks. <laughs> um, so, these socks are the eyelet rib socks from the Knit Picks Socktacular collection. Um, it's one of the little booklets that they put out. I think it has, I want to say, 10 patterns in it. It's like $9.99. It's totally worth it. It's a really good book in terms of um, showing each pattern, both cuff down and toe up, and providing separate instructions for each of, I think, four different toes and four different heels. It was a really good book. I would kind of think of it as like the light, light, light version of sock architecture. It has a similar format where you get a bunch of stitch patterns, a bunch of heel options, a bunch of toe options, and you can just choose what to mix and match. The yarn for these is Sweet Sparrow Yarns in my Nut Hatch base, which is a 75-25 uh, Superwash Merino and Nylon. And this is my Garden Rose colorway. It's blush with little speckles of like a deep leafy green. And then I did my heels, toes, and ribbing in Knit Pick Stroll in just their gray heather colorway. I'm not 100% sure which, I'm not 100% sure what the name of this gray heather is, but it's very easy to find on their website. So yeah, I'm really happy with these. Um, this was my first attempt at doing a toe-up sock with a heel flap and gusset in a contrasting color. Um, so if you haven't knit toe-up socks before, obviously you start at the toe <laughs> and then you work your way up increasing for the gusset and then you turn your heel and do your heel flap. But how you would usually knit a toe-up gusset 
involves going back and forth, um, I think only once, but it's, it's enough to kind of throw you off in terms of doing a contrast heel. Or maybe it's not. Maybe it's just me. But I had a really hard time figuring that out. So this was the first time that I did that successfully and I was really happy with it. And I just did an eye of partridge heel, which is my favorite kind of heel. I have to close up this little gap here when I weave in my ends, because my ends aren't woven in. I just tucked them in the sock. Um, I'm really thrilled with how these turned out and I think they'll be really cute with ankle boots this fall and winter. Because as a knitter, winter is coming. Winter is always coming. Next up, I want to talk about Stash Dash. Um, if you're watching this, I'm relatively certain that you know what Stash Dash is because it's run by the Knit Girls and everybody knows who they are. <laughs> um, so Stash Dash, in case you know, on the off chance that you don't know, is an annual event hosted by Leslie and Laura from the Knit Girls, um, the point of which is to knit at least 5,000 meters out of your stash. And the way that they define yarn stash is once you buy it, once it enters your house, it's stash. So it doesn't have to be something that's been, you know, in your home for a certain amount of time. Um, so I have big plans for this year. I've never actually successfully completed Stash Dash. I was pretty close, I think two years ago, but I didn't quite make it. Um, but this year, I'm going in with a plan. I actually have already figured out exactly what my, uh, what my meters will be for all of the projects that I'm planning. And it's looking good, people. It's looking good. I think I'm gonna make it this year. So, let's go through these projects. Calligraphy cardigan. This should use 1,440 meters. My really, really long socks. Once I finish these, which I still have to put in the afterthought heels as well as finishing the second sock. These should take about 420 meters. I have two other pairs of socks that are waiting on their afterthought heels. Here is this pair of Hermione's Everyday Socks. This is knit in um, Knit Picks Felici in the Tea Party colorway. I'm really happy with these, they're super cute. Um, that's such a great colorway. I love everything that I see anyone knit out of it. Um, I use the Hermione's Everyday Sock pattern. Um, well, for the stitch pattern anyway. I didn't follow it for construction. I just did my standard toe-up sock with a rounded toe um, and ribbing, one by one ribbing at the top. But these guys need their afterthought heels. You can see where it's gonna go in right there. And those, I'm doing kind of a conservative estimate on my socks just because I don't tend to weigh how much I have left um, and I don't want to dig through my sock leftovers to find my leftovers and weigh them. So I'm estimating conservatively that that's about 300 meters. Here is another pair of socks that just needs afterthought heels. These are the Wildflowers and Honeycombs socks um, by the lovely Olivia, who is a Handmade Life on, or This Handmade Life, This Handmade Life, on Instagram. And I knit these with Garden Rose on my nut hatch base for the toes and cuff, and Miss Honey on my nut hatch base for the body of the sock. There, that's actually a little bit truer to color. Um, again, I did my standard, here, I'll show you this one too. I did my standard just rounded toe up sock. Um, I finished with one by one twisted ribbing at the cuff. Um, I really like how neat that looks, but I'm not 100% thrilled with the bind off that I used. Um, I usually use Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off, but on this one, for some reason, I decided to look up a new bind off. I guess I wanted something that wouldn't look quite as ruffly 
when it's not on a person. But I don't know, I, I don't think it actually looks better. I'm probably gonna go back to Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off. But these also need their afterthought heels. I'm hoping to do them in the garden rose colorway. I have to take a look at what I have left of this colorway um, because when I started these socks, it was after completing these socks. And I didn't have a lot left over to start with. I mean, it's not like I can't get more. I can just dye some up. But um, it seems a little silly to dye up a whole skein of something for two contrasting heels. We'll see. We'll see what I can do. Next on the list is my Lily Pilly Wrap. This is a work in progress. Um, I haven't knit on this in a couple weeks because I was completely distracted by the calligraphy cardigan. It's, it goes so quickly, it's so pleasant to knit. I just haven't wanted to knit on anything else. So this is my Lily Pilly thus far. I'm just in the first striping section, obviously. And I'm knitting this in O Wool in their O Wash fingering in Pearly Muscle, Black Bear, and a sort of gray, off-white color. The name is escaping me right now, but it's very pretty. I really like how the three of these look together. So I'm doing this striping in these two colors and then I'm adding in this color for the lace sections. So if I complete the Lily Pilly during Stash Dash, that will be 1,152 meters towards Stash Dash. All of the projects that I've talked about so far put together, that will equal 3,612 meters, um, which is not 5,000 meters but I'm sure I'll cast on other things as well. Um, I always have a pair of socks going for knitting on the train. And I have one more big project. This is a work in progress that has been in progress since 2014. How embarrassing. Um, this is the Even Star Shawl, but I am knitting it in worsted to make a blanket. This was supposed to be a wedding present for my best friend and her husband when they got married in 2014. That didn't happen. Then it was supposed to be a first anniversary present for October of 2015. Nope. So, it's going to be a second anniversary present. October 2016. This thing will be on its way to Marissa and Daniel. Also, it is holding hostage many, many of my stitch markers. And I really want them back to use on other projects. So I need to finish this. Just to give you an idea of how big it is. Yeah, I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see this on the screen, but it's, it's really, really large. Um, it's on three or four uh, joined interchangeable cables and there's no way I could spread out all of the stitches, even on this much cable. I'm actually relatively close to the end of this. I don't know why I just like petered out on it. Uh, so I'm going to really try to get this done, get my stitch markers back, get this out to Marissa. Um, I chose this project as a present for them because Marissa and her husband Daniel are both Lord of the Rings fans. And the Even Star shawl is based on the Even Star in Lord of the Rings, and it's a symbol of love. And I just thought it would be a really appropriate wedding gift for them. So I need to finish this. Must finish this. Maybe I'll work on that today, actually. I am knitting this blanket out of Knit Picks Brava worsted. It's 100% acrylic. Um, Marissa and her husband have two cats, and they are not knitters. So I didn't want to give them this huge blanket and say, oh, by the way, you're going to have to hand wash this every single time. Oh, you might have just heard my little cat, Coco. He started to meow. Hey, Coco, want to say hello? Meow. I thought he was going to maybe come over, but it looks like he's just going to stay out of sight and meow. I'm using... 
Knitfix Bravo Worsted. Uh, the colorway is Hunter. It's a really beautiful, deep forest green. It's very pretty. And I have to say, as far as 100% acrylic yarns go, the Brava is really nice. It's not squeaky, it's not terribly stiff. Um, I can't work on this project for long stretches of time just because it is extremely heavy and the acrylic does not have quite as much give as wool. Um, so it's a little bit tougher on my wrists. But overall, it's still super pleasant to work on, especially considering it's acrylic. So as far as yardage or meterage goes for my Even Star blanket, I have no idea how much yarn this is going to take. I way overbought because I hadn't seen any anyone on Ravelry who had knit an Even Star out of worsted. So I bought 300, no, I bought 3,403 meters of this yarn, which is, I believe, 17 skeins. Um, I'm estimating that it will take about 2,500 meters, which would bring my stash dash total to 6,112 meters, which is absolutely over 5,000 meters. Woohoo! This is going to be my first successful stash dash, you guys. I can feel it. I can feel it. Um, oh, I forgot to mention one project. I forgot to mention two projects. Okay, I would like to knit a pair of socks for my boyfriend. His job requires him to be outside a good amount of the time, and sometimes he is outside in inclement weather. And obviously, as a knitter, the thought of someone wearing cold, wet cotton socks is really not a good thought for me when I know I could do something about it. So I would like to knit him some socks out of this yarn. This is from my shop. This is Sweet Sparrow Yarns on my house friend tweed base in the Dickon colorway, which is based on the character Dickon from The Secret Garden, um, who incidentally my boyfriend really reminds me of. And the blues and greens and browns are very much his colors, so I think he'll like these and they'll keep his feet toasty. So if I complete those, that will be another 400 meters towards Stash Dash. Um, I think I'll make it to my goal whether or not I finish the Even Star blanket, but I gotta get that thing done. It's been in my life for so long. It's, it's the longest running whip I've ever had. You know what, that's not true because the last project that I wanna show you is a longer running whip. <laughs> So, I am knitting a beekeeper's quilt by Tiny Owl Knits. Um, I started this project before I got my first job and moved to my apartment. So I started this in 2013 and I really would like to finish it by 2017, mm, maybe. That might not be realistic. I'd like to at least have it finished by the end of 2017. So here's what I have so far. Uh, when I started putting this together, I was using a pretty slippery yarn. I think it's like a rayon based yarn uh, to tie together the hexapuffs in the corners and it, it did not work. It's too slippery, um, the knots come untied, so I need to go back in and reinforce those areas with a nice wooly yarn that will have a little more grip. But I'm still really happy with how this is coming out and I will show you a couple of my favorite hexapuffs. This little guy, the strawberry, with beads for seeds. I really like this B hexapuff. This is on a ground of my hand spun. If you hear sniffing, oh, Coco is joining me. So this is one of my two cats. This is Coco. Hey, Coco, look, look at the camera. He doesn't want to look at the camera, but I have two cats. They're both Siamese cats and they're very sweet and very nosy. 
Next is this little fox hexapeth. So cute. And the charts for all of these are on Ravelry. Um, there's a really fantastic thread in the Tiny Owl Knits Ravelry group that just has link after link to chart patterns specifically made for hexapuffs. And I also really like my little cabled owl puff. So I would like to I would like to get a good amount of hexapuffs knit during stash dash. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be counting them for toward my stash dash goals or not, just because it may not be productive to tally up, you know, 10 meters at a time. Um, I'm a pretty tight knitter, so my hexapuffs are quite small, and I just don't know that it's going to be worth it to add them to my stash dash total or worth the effort that it would take to like keep them sorted out from the rest of the hexapuffs that are waiting to get joined into my blanket. We'll see. We'll see what ends up happening. If I knit a lot of them, um, then maybe I'll, I'll count them, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Thank you for joining me for the first episode of Sweet Sparrow Knits. I would love to hear from you on social media. The best way to contact me is Instagram because I really like Instagram, so I'm on there quite a lot and I check it very often. Um, if you have any questions or comments, I would really love to hear them. So have a wonderful rest of your Sunday or whatever day it is by the time that you're seeing this. And I will talk to you guys next week. Bye.